Let's make this simple scatter plot that shows the penguins data set. Each dot here represents an individual penguin. The x-axis represents bill length and the y-axis represents flipper length. This diagram shows Coleman length, which is called bill length in our data set. It's the length of the, I guess, the beak or the bill of the penguin. To make a scatter plot, I'll start by forking this viz and I'll call it simple scatter plot. I'd like to visualize this penguin's data set, which has been configured with a custom URL, curran slash penguins. And it has a named export called data. Therefore, in my scatter plot, I can say import data from at curran slash penguins. And then if I console.log data, sure enough, it shows up. There's our rows of data. All right, this has some leftover exports from earlier. What I would prefer to do is import x-axis, y-axis, x-axis label, and y-axis label from this axis labels viz, which also has a custom URL. So I should be able to import all of those from curran slash axis labels, in which case I can delete all these files. In which case I can delete all these files that define the things that I'm importing. But actually these imports need to go in viz.js, where they are actually used. Okay, now we're in business. We are importing the data and we are importing the functions that help us draw the axes and the axis labels. Now let's do the fun part of actually making a scatter plot. Now this penguins data set has a first row that looks something like this. This is a sample row. I like to do this, put it in a comment, just so that we can clearly see what's available to us. These numeric columns, also called quantitative attributes, any of these can be used for x or y. So let's start by plotting bill length as x. I'll do that by defining a value accessor called x value to be a function that takes as input one row from the data and returns that particular value. And then we can change the label text to say bill length mm. And then we can do something similar for the y value. And let's plot bill depth as y. And I'll also change the label to say bill depth. OK, now we need to interpret and use x value and y value over in viz.js. I'll start by destructuring x value and y value. And also, critically, we need to pass in the data to our viz function. So I'll pass that as well. And then we need to use the data to determine the domain. Now keep in mind the domain is usually set to be the min and the max from the data. And the min and max taken together is called the extent. And D3 actually provides a utility called extent that we can use by passing the first argument as data and the second argument as x value. Now I haven't run this yet, but when I do, watch how these numbers on the bottom change. Here we go. Boom. Now these are different based on the min and max values from the data. And we can do the same thing for y, just replacing x value with y value. Now here comes the fun part of defining circles. Let's see if the AI can come up with a solution for this. svg.selectAllCircle dot data data dot join circle. Yes, this is exactly right. And when I run this, boom, a bunch of circles show up. The key here is these two functions that assign 
the x and y pixel coordinates for the circle centers to be the row of data passed through, in this case the x value accessor function, which gives us a value from the domain of the scale. And that's the value that we pass into the scale, which is actually a function that transforms values from the domain into values from the range. And then here we're hard coding the circle radius, which I don't really like to do. Let me make this an option. I'll call it circle radius and add this to the list of things that we are destructuring. And then in index.js, when we invoke this, I can define circle radius to be, let's say, 5. And this gives us a nice place where we can tweak all the parameters at once. And to get a little more granularity, I'm going to divide by, let's say, 100. Now when we drag this number, we get a pretty fine-grained control and we can tweak it to be just the way we want. Another neat trick with scatter plots in particular is to set the opacity. Let's set it to 0.5 and we can destructure that inside of viz. So now we have that available in here and we can set the opacity attribute to be circle opacity. And now they are slightly transparent. Now check this out. This is where it gets really fun. We can tweak the radius and the opacity to get an effect where we can see the density of these different um, clusters in here. That's the beautiful thing about opacity. It lets you see where the circles are uh, dense, like where they overlap. And yeah, now that it's set up like this, we can pretty quickly change what is encoded by x and y. So that's what body mass looks like as x. We can also look at, say, flipper length. But I think I'll put it back to bill length. I don't know, what about flipper length as x? That looks pretty cool. Let me update the label here to say flipper length mm. And just looking at this, uh, the it feels like there's a little bit too much white space on the top. So let me just bring down the top margin and the right margin. And you know, this text now is a little bit too close to these numbers because these are uh, triple digits. Luckily, we can tweak the y-axis label offset to position that the way we want. Notice that there are a bunch of points at 0, 0. This indicates to me that there's some missing data, but uh, we can handle that separately. All right, that's how you can make a simple scatter plot. To recap, here are the changes we made. We import data from the Penguins dataset, and we added a couple of options to viz, namely x value and y value. And these are both functions that take as input d one of the rows from our dataset, and here's a sample row for reference, and it returns one of the column values. We also added circle radius and circle opacity. And then over in viz.js, we changed it to import these functions from this other viz so that we don't have to copy the implementation each time we fork. And then we destructure the new options, x value and y value, and then these circle options. And we use extent from D3 which computes the minimum and maximum values of this x value accessor function across all rows of our data and returns it as an array of two numbers. We did that for both x and y. And then we added this code block here that renders the circle for each row of the data by saying svg.selectAllCircle.data data and data 
is also another option that we introduced. Dot join circle, and then we set x and y to be functions that take as input d, one of our rows, and pass it through the x and y value accessor functions to get a value from the scales domain, and then we pass that through the scale itself, which is a function that takes as input a value from the domain and returns a value from the range. And then we set the radius and opacity attributes here. That's how we make a simple scatter plot. Here's a challenge for you. Fork this viz and modify it to show your data. Thanks for watching and good luck.